I am Biju Balakrishnan working with SIS GST and uh, the topic I am going to explain sampling theorem for low pass signal basically in uh, a many applications the information signal is in, in, in the form of analog signals like a output of microphone output of video camera but nowadays we want to convert that analog signals to digital signal so there are many digital processing applications are possible on information signal the better quality can be achieved using the digital compression techniques digital processing technique so that is why the requirement is analog signal should be converted to digi digital signal then the information can be transmitted in the form of digital signal at the receiving side better quality can be achieved and the first step for converting analog signal to digital signal is continuous time signal should be converted to discrete time signal for that we need sampling theorem the meaning of sampling is the input signal is converted to a discrete time signal so basically it can be implemented using a switch switch is going to be closed at every sampling interval maybe we can say it's a ts second so at every ts second switch is going to be closed what will be the input that input will come at the output side so the continuous time signal can be converted to discrete time signal but now the question is how many samples should be taken per second and that is going to be decided based on our sampling theorem and here the sampling theorem is explaining for a low pass signal and the meaning of low pass signal is the frequency is varying from 0 to fm and input signal may not be a low pass signal so what we want to do first the signal should pass through a low pass signal with a cutoff frequency fm then the frequency is varying only from 0 to fm and the bandwidth is fm hertz so we can say it's a low pass signal with a cutoff frequency fm hertz so that is why first the signal is passing through a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency fm normally for a voice communication especially in a telephone communication the cutoff frequency fm is equal to 3.4 kilohertz according to sampling theorem x of t be a band limited signal with maximum frequency fm that is the meaning of a low pass signal x of t can be represented as x of nts and that NTS shows that the signal is not a continuous time signal, it's a discrete time signal, signal existing only at every TS second using a periodic train of impulses. And the meaning of the periodic train of impulses, the signal is going to be taken only at every TS second without any width. Practically, it, it is not realizable, but theoretically we are saying the signal is going to be implemented using periodic train of impulses. This process is called instantaneous sampling. If you are using periodic train of impulses, then the sampling is known as instantaneous sampling. Instead of that, periodic train of pulses are going to be used practically. The reason is when the switch is going to be closed, it cannot be closed for a zero second. So it will take some finite time. Due to that reason, instead of getting instantaneous sampled signal, we are getting practically pulse amplitude modulated signal. From X of NDS, X of T can be regenerated, that is at the receiving set. From the sampled signal, X of T can be regenerated without any distortion using an LPF with cutoff frequency FM Hertz, where FM is the maximum frequency of the input signal provided. Now the condition is FM should be greater than or equal to twice FM. That means the number of samples we should take per second should be greater than or equal to twice of maximum frequency of the input signal. Where FM is the maximum frequency of the input signal, FS is a sampling frequency. 1 upon FS is TS, that is a sampling interval. So at every TS second, switch can be closed, that input will come at the output side. We are converting that X of T into X of NDS. From X of NDS, original signal can be regenerated without any distortion. If we are able to get at least twice FM samples per second. Here I am showing the same process in time domain. The input signal is multiplied with a periodic train of impulses. Input signal is X of T. Periodic train of impulses is S of T. And the product is X of T into S of T. This is known as instantaneous sampled signal. That closing, the switch is going to be closed at every TS second, can be expressed in terms of a multiplication. So that is X of T into S of T. That is the instantaneous sampled signal. And from this instantaneous sampled signal, original signal can be regenerated using an LPF with a cutoff frequency L FM hertz. This LPF is known as reconstruction filter. This reconstruction filter is used at the receiving cell. Now, I am proving this sampling theorem in frequency domain. 
x of t is the input signal and its Fourier transform is x of f. S of t is a sampling signal that is a periodic train of impulses and the Fourier transform 1 by Ts sigma del f minus nfs. And uh, x of t and s of t are multiplied in time domain that is x of t into s of t multiplication in time domain is equivalent to convolution in frequency domain that is why x of f convolution with 1 by Ts sigma del f minus nfs and the result is 1 by Ts sigma x of f minus nfs. And this is a Fourier transform of instantaneous sampled signal. And uh, n is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity. When n is equal to 0, it will be x of f. n is equal to 1, x of f minus fs. That will be the uh, right shifted spectrum. n is equal to minus 1, x of f plus fs. That will be the left shifted version. Like that, we are going to get the spectrum. So here I am going to take three different cases. That is case 1. Sampling frequency fs greater than twice fm. Case 2, fs is equal to twice fm. Case 3, fs less than twice fm. So finally, we should be able to prove the result that fs greater than twice fm and fs is equal to twice fm. Original signal can be regenerated without any distortion. Case 1 is fs greater than twice fm and this sampling is known as oversampling because we are going to take more number of samples after closing the switch at every t a second. And the result is 1 by Ts into x of f, that is when n is equal to 0. And next, when n is equal to 1, 1 by Ts into x of f minus fs. And the condition here is fs greater than twice fm. That is why there is a gap between first spectrum and second spectrum. This is the, the guard band between x of f and x of f minus fs. And uh, this is due to fs greater than twice fm. And from this spectrum, we are able to get the original spectrum, that is a message spectrum 1 by Ts into x of f, if this is passing through an LPF with a cutoff frequency fm. So once it is passing through LPF with a cutoff frequency fm, the output is only 1 by Ts into x of f. That is always same as the original spectrum x of f. The reason is x of f is multiplied by a constant. The information remains same. This indicates that if the condition is satisfied, that is f is greater than twice f m, original signal can be regenerated without any distortion using an LPF with a cutoff frequency f m. Case 2, f s is equal to twice f m and this particular rate is known as Nyquist rate. That is the minimum number of samples needed to get the original signal without any distortion. Even under this case, we can see there is no overlap between x of f and x of f minus fs. So due to this reason, if it is passing through an LPF with cutoff frequency fm, only 1 by Ts into x of f can be regenerated at the output side. That is exactly same as the original spectrum. This shows that original signal x of f can be regenerated without any distortion if fs is equal to twice fm. So that is an indication. If fs is equal to twice fm or fs greater than twice fm, original signal can be regenerated without any distortion. So I will go for a case 3. Case 3, fs less than twice fm. When fs less than twice fm, that particular rate is known as undersampling. So due to fs less than twice fm, there is an overlap between x of f and x of f minus fs. Surely you can see that overlap here. This is that overlap area. x of f and x of f minus f, fs are overlapping. Due to this overlap and uh, there is a distortion between the spectrum x of f and its shifted signal x of f minus fs. And if it is passing through an LPF with a cutoff frequency fm, the output what we are going to get is from minus fm to plus fm. So from minus fm to plus fm, we are getting x of f, but the part of x of f minus fs and x of fs is overlapped with x of f. Due to this overlap, there is a distortion occurring at the output side. This distortion is known as foldover distortion or that is also known as aliasing distortion. The reason is the distortion is generated by the allies of x of f. x of f minus fs is an allies of x of f and x of f minus fs is creating distortion with the x of f. That is why it is known as aliasing distortion. So again, this, is, this indicates that when fs less than twice fm, original signal cannot be regenerated without any distortion. So we are able to conclude like this. If fs greater than or is equal to twice fm, original signal can be regenerated without any distortion. 
if f is less than twice fm signal cannot be regenerated without any distortion without any distortion but practically when you are going for a practical sampling technique when f is equal to twice fm original signal cannot be regenerated without any distortion the reason for that is when f is equal to twice fm we need an ideal low pass filter but ideal low pass filter is not a realizable filter due to that reason practically f is always greater than twice fm for a music music conversion the maximum frequency normally we are going to take is 20 kilohertz and the sampling frequency is equal to 44.1 kilohertz for a telephone communication maximum frequency is equal to 3.4 kilohertz but the sampling frequency is equal to 8 kilohertz so for all practical application fs is always greater than or is equal to twice fm so this is the proof of sampling theorem